Hi, I am NR. Let us cover the synapses of dual nature of radiation and matter. This is one of the simplest chapters in 12th standard. More than 130 multiple choice questions are discussed in the mobile app. Link of the app is in the description box. Download and get surprised with the subscription fee. Yes, it is 100 rupee, which you won't burden your parents. But for me, it is a solid support. Thank you for your encouragement. Energy of a photon. Energy of a photon of frequency nu is given by h nu, where h is Planck's constant, nu is frequency. V equal to F lambda. This we have seen in 11th standard waves chapter. So in place of V, write C. This is for radiation. Frequency, nu, just to change in notation. Lambda, wavelength. Or nu equal to C by lambda. So this in this expression gives E equal to H nu, energy of a photon. Also, Hc by lambda. Okay. Energy in terms of wavelength, energy in terms of frequency. Electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic spectrum. Violet, red in this direction. Let the wavelength increase. So, shorter than violet is ultraviolet. X-ray, gamma rays, cosmic rays, after red, IR, microwaves and radio waves. Okay. Now, I want to calculate energy of a photon, violet photon, violet. So, let lambda for violet be 400 nanometer approximately. This is sufficient. So energy is H C by lambda. H is 6.63, 10 power minus 34. Speed of light in vacuum, 3 10 power 8. By lambda, 400 nanometer is 4 10 power minus 7. This will be in terms of joule. But I want in terms of electron volt. So, how to get electron volt from joule? Divide this by charge of electron 1.6 10 power minus 19. And this turns out to be 3 electron volt. This is energy of violet photon. Similarly, energy of red, energy of red, red photon is approximately 800 nanometer. So, energy turns out to be 1.5 electron volt. This is sufficient. This is sufficient for my discussion. Okay. Now, violet is 3 EV. Red is 1.5 EV. X-ray is in terms of kilo electron volt. Thousands of electron volt. 1000 electron volt, 1500 electron volt, 2000 electron volt. All those comes under X-rays. Gamma is mega electron volt. So between 3 and 1000, all the values comes under ultraviolet, okay, 735, 735 electron volt is between these two, 3 and 1000, therefore this should be ultraviolet radiation, 140 electron volt, this is between these two numbers, therefore this should be ultraviolet photon. So this is how we should identify part of electromagnetic spectrum based on energy. Earlier in high school, we used to identify based on wavelength, but now try to identify based on electron volt. For these, we don't use electron volt because energy of red itself is 1.5. Energy of IR, micro and radio waves will be much less than 1.5. So here we prefer frequency. Using frequency, we try to understand radio waves or microwaves okay whereas for all this 
let us use electromagnetic sorry let us use electron volt einstein's photoelectric effect equation that is e equal to work function plus kinetic energy so here we try to write maximum kinetic energy during discussion of synapses or during discussion of multiple choice question if i drop maximum okay don't feel bad because to save time i can drop this that doesn't mean that it is just it is not just kinetic energy it is always maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons now this is energy of incident radiation energy of incident radiation in terms of frequency is h nu work function h nu not plus kinetic energy is half m v square this is maximum velocity of photoelectrons this in terms of wavelength h c by lambda wavelength of incident radiation h c by lambda not charge of electron times stopping potential charge of electron times stopping potential is kinetic energy so let me write s yes here v s yes stands for stopping potential now what about stopping potential stopping potential stopping potential of photoelectrons is 2 volt implies observe small letter v stopping potential is 2 volt means maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons is 2 electron volt stopping potential volt kinetic energy ev if kinetic energy is 2 electron volt then it is 2 into 1.6 10 power minus 19 joule this is equal to 3.2 10 power minus 19 joule so from stopping potential to energy similarly kinetic energy of photoelectrons is 3 electron volt this implies that stopping potential of these photoelectrons is 3 volt so using stopping potential we get the idea of kinetic energy we get the idea of maximum velocity of photoelectrons few experimental observations of photoelectric effect first is effect of intensity effect of intensity on photoelectric current this is intensity this is photoelectric current photoelectric current now what is intensity intensity is energy per unit area per unit time energy per unit area per unit time is intensity now in the case of radiation energy is n times h nu n is number of photons this is energy of a photon see number of photons energy of each photon product of these two gives total energy that total energy divided by area by time now intensity is directly proportional to number of photons so intensity is directly proportional to number of photons so we need this information if intensity is zero if photons are not falling on the system for example this is the metal okay metal this is incident radiation 10 photons are falling means maximum say 8 electrons are observed for 10 photons 8 electrons are observed careful photons are represented by this electron particle represented by this arrow mark okay now because of 10 photons let there be emission of 8 electrons so because of 10 8 electrons are emitted now this number is doubled 
nothing but intensity is doubled because intensity is directly proportional to number. If this number is doubled, then this number also gets doubled thereby. Now, if no photon is falling, no question of emission of electrons. That is nothing but if intensity is zero, then photoelectric current is also zero. So this is a straight line passing through the origin. So graph of photoelectric current versus intensity is a straight line passing through the origin. This is true if frequency is greater than threshold frequency, is it it? Or wavelength less than threshold wavelength. Under this condition, this is true. Effect of frequency on maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. Y axis, X axis. This is frequency of incident radiation. This is maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. If frequency is small, less than threshold frequency, new less than threshold frequency, no emission. If there is no emission, no question of kinetic energy. Frequency is increased, but still frequency is less than threshold frequency, no emission. So at some frequency, emission starts and there onwards, it is a straight line, linear. So this is the graph of kinetic energy of photoelectrons versus frequency. E equal to work function plus kinetic energy. This is Einstein's photoelectric effect equation. This energy is nothing but H nu. So maximum kinetic energy equal to H nu minus work function. Observe, this is on Y axis. So this is Y. Frequency is on X axis. This is X. So this equation, this equation is of the form y equal to mx plus c where coefficient of x is slope coefficient of nu is h therefore slope of this gives Planck's constant x intercept gives threshold frequency x intercept continue with this this is y intercept y intercept gives the c is y intercept y intercept minus 5 so magnitude is 5 minus minus down so negative y intercept so this gives work function this is threshold frequency slope of this straight line is Planck's constant and Planck's constant is constant for all radiations if we use some other metal photosensitive metal then for some other photosensitive metal this is the graph for third photosensitive material third type this is the graph in all the cases the straight lines should be parallel to each other thereby their slopes should give Planck's constant so copper sodium metal potassium metal so if I change the metal work function changes but slope of ki maximum kinetic energy versus frequency should be same that same or constant slope mentions are the unique value of Planck's constant okay so we can have curves like this straight lines like this now variation of photoelectric current versus applied voltage anode potential x-axis y-axis this is anode potential and this is photoelectric current let me write I this is the nature of the graph. This part of the graph represents saturation current. Saturation current. We cannot get current greater than that. And this X intercept represents stopping potential. So this is the nature of the graph. Suppose if we keep metals same and if we change the intensity with one light with one light nothing but with one source of light this is the graph with two sources of light we get this type of graph with three sources of light 
we get this type of graph. Observe carefully, saturation current with intensity I1, saturation current with intensity I2, saturation current with intensity I3. Then I3 should be greater than I2, greater than I1. So this graph is obtained with higher intensity. This is obtained with lower intensity or lowest intensity among these three. Since we are just increasing the intensity, not energy of incident photons, stopping potential is unique for the material. So this is constant. So that is why these three curves should merge at this point. Suppose experiment is done by keeping intensity constant. Let me keep intensity constant. Intensity constant. Okay. Of course, this is a graph of anode potential versus photoelectric current. Let us do the experiment for three different materials. For three different materials. Then this is the curve for first metal. This is the curve for second metal, curve for third metal. Stopping potential for first metal, stopping potential for second metal, stopping potential for third metal. So when we use three different materials, we get this type of graph. For the same metal, three different intensities, we get this type of graph. Next, de Broglie equations. So de Broglie wavelength in terms of velocity, velocity of the particle, lambda equal to h by m v, also h by p, velocity, mass into velocity is momentum. So lambda is h by p, h by root of 2m capital E, this E is kinetic energy, okay. So usually, E is taken for electric field, isn't it? But in this equation, E stands for kinetic energy. Don't get confused. Equal to H by root of 2m charge of the particle and accelerating potential. Charge and accelerating potential. So this is lambda. And for an electron, for electrons, Lambda equal to H by root of 2m e v. So on the right hand side, this v is the variable. Mass of electron, charge of electron, Planck's constant. So when we substitute and simplify, leaving this voltage, we get 1.22 nanometer by root v. 7. So for most of the multiple choice questions, this is enough. 1.22 nanometer by root of 100. Questions are asked like this. If electrons are accelerated by a potential difference of 100 volt, okay, v equal to 100 volt. What is the de Broglie wavelength? De Broglie wavelength is 1.227 nanometer by root of 100 root of 100 is 10 so this this gives 0.1227 nanometer electrons are accelerated under 625 volts 625 volt means why they took that ugly number it is not an ugly number it's a beautiful number because we want root of that number electrons are accelerated under 144 volt oh 144 144 is square root of 144 is 12 so we can use 12 here so that is where this is useful always remember this equation is only for electrons because mass of electron is considered if you consider protons then you have to put mass of proton and then simplify okay so you don't have to memorize all those equations like equations for equation for proton equation for alpha particle equation for some other charge particle okay if you can remember for electron that is enough and you should know the method to get this equation planck's constant to mass of that particle charge of that particle that matters